Hello everyone, this is Mark with Lean ISO Management Systems. In our previous video, we started discussing our document change record or DCR process flow that covers DCR identification, reason for change, waste management, and checking for duplicate information. Today, we will discuss the need to validate new or revised documents. Stay with me, at the end I will show you a link to this DCR template. So, let's see why validation of new or revised documents is vital. When you get new batteries for your flashlight, you first try to see if they work. Before you buy a new suit, you try it to make sure it fits. Not long ago, I bought a cute electric lawn mower. Guess what? The first thing I did, I plugged in the battery to see how it worked. While we always try new things at home. In the office, we accept written procedures as a given, not questioning how well they work in real life, resulting in numerous corrections and adjustments after the release. Surprisingly, in all my years of auditing and consulting, I have seen, believe it or not, only two companies with document validation requirements in their DCR processes. In some companies, the percentage of corrections in the DCR process may be as high as 30%, with anybody's guess what these corrections cost the company. I hope by now I have convinced you that validating procedures before release is a good idea. As you may remember from the previous video, we are revising our management review PowerPoint template to add missing requirement. Look at this example of the validation record. Kim Smith checked the draft on March 3, 2023. The review confirmed that the new revision contained all the standard requirements, including top management participation, plan intervals, 13 inputs, and 4 outputs. If you choose to follow this path, try not only to have a signature and a date stating that so and so validated the procedure but also include an explicit description, who, when, and how. The following section is training. Depending on the change, the originator determines if training is required. In our example, the originator selects a group training, and the subject matter expert performs such review per the training matrix and provides attendance records to documentation management personnel for filing. When the originator determines that self-training is required, documentation management collects email confirmations for filing. If training is not required, we move on to the next section. Review, Approval, and Release Authorization Depending on your company's requirements, you may put here as many approvers as you wish, but we have just the quality manager's signature in our example. The last section in our process is the document and the DCR filing. After approval of the change, documentation management personnel files a PDF copy of the document in the BMS structure under the following name. The title underscore. Revision as RXX. Next, documentation management personnel scan the DCR form in PDF format and save a copy in the DCR folder of the BMS structure. BMS structure is a depository for our documents and records, we will discuss it in the following videos. This is all for today folks. Let's summarize our discussion today. Validate your document changes before release at the point of use to show their suitability and adequacy. In the following video, we will close our analysis of Clause 752 by discussing the need to investigate and understand the causes of document corrections. As I promised in the beginning, here is your link to the DCR template. Go to the Academy page on our website and see how our templates can help your company to lean up your documentation. Give it a try and comment below if you like it. Do not forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment. Your support helps us promote our Lean QMS project. To learn more about Lean ISO management systems, check out my book, The Lean Revolution. Thanks for joining me today and stay tuned for the following videos, I hope to see you then.